I think it is nearing two years since we started this Saturday FB Live. Every week, some new topic, something to stimulate the mind, something to take back and learn something for the week. So we went on and on and on and we've had so many topics. I was actually running out of topics. So I asked all my team members and friends and everybody, please give me suggestions. They gave me a lot of suggestions. Now, when I had all these suggestions, again, I had to decide which one would be the most suitable to take up for this Saturday FB Live program. This would suit this type of people. This would be appreciated. This directly connects to oneself. This is too general. I had so much problem deciding which one to take that a tube light glowed on top of my head. Since you are not able to decide, why don't you have a session on decision making? Ha! Ah, problem solved. So here we are with some very practical, very useful inputs into how you can improve your decision making ability. Right. OK, let's start with your life as it started early when you were a baby. You know what used to happen? you would take what we call as impulsive decisions. You would see what is the need at that moment and you would go ahead and take whatever the decision was to be taken. If I want to cry now, if I want to scream, if I want to grab, if I want to turn my head away, if I want to throw a tantrum. So all decisions were very, very impulsive. But then what happens slowly you started learning those basic life skills even as you were a baby. And how did you learn that? You learned by watching other people. You saw that if you behave like this, <clears throat> mama comes and smiles at you and does what you want. If you do something differently, mama doesn't like it. Or if you do it in this manner, mama doesn't come at all. She ignores uh, uh, you. So like that. You started learning from your interactions with others. And one of the most important thing in that was how much of decision making were you encouraged to do? Were you encouraged to take decisions? That has made you what you are today. If you were very lucky and you had these elders who all people love babies, all people love small children, and they are willing to do anything for them, right? But did your elders, your parents, grandparents, whoever was looking after you when you were very small, did they encourage you to develop what we call as autonomy, to be able to take your own decisions, to start thinking for yourself what is good or bad, what is advisable, what should be done and how it should be done and like that. That played a very important role. And why am I telling you this? You are no longer a baby. But whenever you are dealing with children, particularly small children, please start off by helping them to do decision making. Don't wait till they come and do their MBA or something like that and study you know, this as a management topic. It's a life topic. It's not a management uh, topic, right? So you have this little fellow. You are about to take him out to the park and you are going to pull out a clean t-shirt and put it on him. Instead of just pulling out the most appropriate t-shirt and putting it on him, go to the cupboard, show him there's this blue t-shirt and there's this green t-shirt. Which one do you want to wear? If your child is not able to take that decision and if he says, no, whatever you say, I don't know, that's a warning signal. This child will grow up, become an adult. In making. So start teaching it to uh, him right from now. Start teaching it to him. OK, so one is to ask him to select. When you go to a restaurant, would you like to have masala dosa or would you like to have set dosa? Which do you prefer? When we go to an ice cream shop, which flavor of ice cream you uh, want? When you go to park, there are four or five different swings and play equipment. Which one do you want to be uh, using uh, right now? 
if you give a head start to a child, the child grows up into a person who is competent of, you know, taking proper decisions. Not only that, the child also learns how to take responsibility. That's another very, very important aspect of life. No? There are people who constantly keep passing the buck, as we say. They want others to take decisions for them. Be it their elders or parents, be it their teachers, be it their seniors, be it their gurus, be it God. I will leave it to uh, God. But I learned a very simple and very nice lesson from my grandfather. He said, trust in God, but tie up your camel first. So even when you, you know, say that, yes, I will leave it to God. God and God will do the best for me or my guru will do, give me the right suggestion. But are you tying your camel? That is what decision making is all about. So once you develop that habit of taking responsibility for yourself, it helps you to do decision making. And the better you are at decision making, the greater responsibility you take for yourself. They are both interconnected. And they both build you up very, very well into a couple of very important life skills. I'm sure all of you are aware that many, many years back, it's now nearing 25 years, I think more than that. When the World Health Organization of United Nations brought out what is known as the 10 basic life skills to lead a good quality of life. And they did it after years and years of extensive research across continents, across cultures across economic strata, across ages, education background. And they put out these basic 10 life skills. Two of them are decision making and problem solving, interconnected to each other. So when the WHO itself tells you that this is a fundamental skill that is required for you to lead a good quality of life, should we not be working on it? And these are skills which have to be developed. Let's be very clear that nobody is born with a decision-making skill. It depends. I told you, it starts with babies. It starts with how your elders treated you, or it starts with how you are treating the little children who are under your uh, you know, control. For that, we have to be able to learn to think a little, you know, out of the box, as we um, call it. Let me at this point also clarify one very important uh, thing which we use in management jargon. That is what we call as programmed decisions and non-programmed decisions. Here is this gentleman who is a manager of an office. Every day he faces situations where he has to take decisions. Somebody comes and says, sir, that customer is getting very unhappy. He is shouting at the salespeople and uh, he is threatening to cancel the contract. What does this good manager and capable manager do? Put him on to me immediately. I'll talk to him. I will find out what the issue is. I will tackle it and I will see that it is uh, done. So nice of you, sir. We can always rely on uh, you. So this report which has been made by the accounts uh, uh, fellow, we had asked him to do this sales projections. There are so many mistakes in that, sir. We can't send this to the head office. He has really created blunders. What will we do today? It's the last day we have to send this report. Don't worry. Get that report here. Do one thing. Get that other fellow from the marketing uh, team who is from the accounts background. You remember? I'm forgetting his name. Ask him to come and meet me immediately. What we'll do is I'll put it on to him. I'll sit with him and I'll revise the whole thing. Come, man. Do it. Sir, I've never done this accounts uh, thing, sir. I'm, no, but you know accounts, isn't it? Yes, sir. Of course, I've studied BCom and all that. Come on, sit with it and uh, get going. I'll help you. Any doubts, anything, you get back to me. But I know that you can do it. Okay? Come on, let's get down to it. I'm just giving you quick examples to show you how a person is acknowledged as a very competent manager because of the way he solves these day-to-day -day problems. In the same manner, let's go to the other side of the fence. There is this homemaker. She has to take care of the children. She has to take care of her husband. She may have some old parent in the um, house. She has to see that the house is swept and cleaned and mopped. 
she has to make sure that the dishes are clean she has to make sure that meals are made now she is in the kitchen and she is making some uh, dish and she realizes that one ingredient is missing the stock is over she immediately looks for another bottle of something similar gets that and says okay i will make it with this or i'll switch over to this other uh, uh, dish and i will make this instead of uh, that while she is doing that she realizes that the gas has got over okay i'll get that other induction heater and for the time being i'll do that in the meanwhile we'll make a call for the gas and we'll see how soon we can get it the maid servant comes and says that uh, my mother is not well my child is not well i can't work today i came to tell you that i want leave okay do one thing in the next 10 minutes first finish off this very important thing you have to clean this uh, utensils which i need no quickly in 10 minutes finish that off then i'll give you leave i'll give you a little money also to buy the medicines go win win situation maid servant is happy you get your essential work done so in the same way as i told you about the manager here is a person who everybody admires as an amazing homemaker she never gets flustered she handles all possible situations day to day you see how much responsibility she's got but yet she does a wonderful job of it now comes the important part which i wanted to share with you you know what both of them are doing are what we call as taking programmed decision they have been mentally programmed to handle in one case issues of the office or the branch in the other case issues involving the kitchen and the home and the family members but what happens when you have to take a non programmed decision i distinctly remember the time when a counselee of mine whose husband was a super achiever in profession when their child suddenly fell sick and the doctor said we have to do an emergency surgery immediately we need the parents consent this man broke down and started crying and couldn't pick up the pen to sign the consent his wife was you know screaming at him that we have to take him to the ot we have to get the surgery done please sign it doctors will not start till they have the signature of the parent but he broke down he's crying he's bawling he's saying i want to call up my mother and check with her what is there to check with the mother the doctors are saying that the operation has to be done right now what will your mother tell uh, you why because all the decisions that he took in so many years of his professional life he never had to face an emotional situation like this where he is told that his one and only child is suddenly so sick that he needs emergency surgery nothing happened the surgery took place within an hour it was over doctor came out with a big smile and said yes everything is under control we have done the surgery within a day or two we'll discharge him and he'll go back child is growing up very well now studying growing up doing everything fine but you see the crisis situation at that uh, time this is what i'm talking about so true decision making is when you learn how to take what we call as non programmed decisions and in this there's something very interesting when i need to decide should i take this option or should i take that option a couple of very important things i want to share with you one is that what is actually good for me and what i think is good for me is not necessarily the same many a time i get confused i think this is good for me but in reality it is not good so what should we do you have to get inputs from knowledgeable persons a sad mistake that we make is that we sometimes take advice or take suggestions from wrong people i was talking to a very bright student who had an excellent academic record and i was telling him now that he has a gap year and he has time on his hands take up an internship or a job what you need is exposure to the corporate world all these years all the degrees diplomas whatever you have done was within the classroom what you need now is to see the real working world 
get any small organization which is willing to take you whether they pay you or not is also immaterial but as long as you get to learn how to interact with people how to function in an office and he got a good break there's this organization which is small but growing very fast the owner the ceo is a very nice person he said come you're a bright guy and i'll take you under my wings and i'll give you some challenging work to do all that happened two months later he turned up and he said sir i want to quit i said why no i find the work interesting i think what i'm doing is good but you know people are telling me that uh, you know this work can be done even by a 12 standard pass and you were a graduate why are you doing this type of work okay is defined people he was taken aback no sir so many people are saying i said yes define tell me who these people are sir i have this friend who lives down the road and this 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 what does he uh, uh, do sir he runs a small shop uh, he's a dropout from uh, college so he is running his father's shop what does he know about the corporate world would you like to take advice and suggestions from such people this happens without our realizing it people very confidently advise you to do what you should do and what you should not do without knowing what is good for you so please remember when you are getting stuck identify people who are not only knowledgeable but neutral who have no vested interests and take their inputs and then decide how to go about it equally important is whether you should take rational decisions or whether you should take emotional decisions this gentleman whose example i gave you was a person who was all the time using only his left brain to take decisions as a corporate executive and a big shot all the decisions that he had to take were logical analytical sequential left brain characteristics but when he was told that his child needs emergency surgery what he needed was emotional intelligence skills to be able to take decisions skill to be able to handle something which he has never handled or never even dreamt of in his life that his little child will you know fall so sick that doctors will say that you know unless you do emergency surgery he can die when this sort of situation arises are we prepared for it is the question are we balancing it i am more and more convinced that the people who are going to be successful and happy in future are the people who use both sides of their brain who can use their logical and analytical capacities and at the same time who are intuitive who are emotional who are interpersonal who are creative they can think outside the box if you develop both sides of the brain you will be able to do uh, you know wonders which brings me to another two three important uh, um, uh, points and as usual after that we will be having a nice interactive uh, uh, session with your comments on it uh, one is to understand that there is a difference between facts and perception what i think is true what i believe is true what i have been told by my friend who runs a shop down the road are not necessarily facts facts are verifiable facts can be proven facts are authenticated by somebody who is an expert and who is an authority on that particular area so please do not get carried away by your perception learn to connect it to real life facts similarly do not take a decision in a hurry when you are in a emotional turmoil unless you have to like for example in this case he had to sign those uh, papers the surgery had to take place immediately that's a very extreme case but in most cases when you realize that a decision has to be uh, taken but it is not an emergency in the sense that you don't have to take it in the next one minute or one hour please take time to think it is proven fact 
that if you just calm down, think, rethink, analyze, you take far better decisions than if you do something impulsively at that moment. The simplest thing for even small decisions, you know, they say is count to 10. I need to now decide whether to go left or right. If I just stop for a moment and give those 10 seconds, I take much better decisions. If it is something more serious, if it is something which involves, you know, a lot of important uh, things, there's another proverb which says sleep over it. A 24-hour cycle, your fresh thinking of the morning, your tiredness in the afternoon, your exhaustion in the evening, your recouping by having a good night's sleep. It's like how you recharge the batteries of your phone. You've been using the phone the whole day. What do you do in the night? You put it for recharge. And in the morning, your phone is as good as it was yesterday. The same thing your brain needs, recharging. And sleep is one of the best recharging methods that you can do. So sleep over it, and then you will be able to take down the this. Ha! Ah, a word of caution. Stress is inversely proportional to your decision-making capability. The greater you are under stress, the lesser are the chances that you will be able to take the best decision. If you find that you are stressed out, do something first to bring down your stress. How to do it, I'm not going to tell you. You have to find which is the most suitable way by which you can bring down your uh, stress. But the moment you identify that I am under stress, become aware that I may land up taking wrong decisions or inappropriate decisions. Uh, uh, don't get carried away by this herd mentality. Everybody is saying this. Everybody is doing that. Everybody is putting me down. Everybody is laughing at me. There is no everybody in this world. There are these loud and boisterous people who try to impose their will on you. And there is this silent majority who says, since you have not asked for my opinion or my advice, I'm just going to keep quiet. I think what you're doing is wrong. I think there are far better way of handling this situation. But why should I say it? You have not asked me for uh, uh, what should uh, be my advice. I'm going to keep quiet. And these loud and boisterous people appear to be, as I said, everybody. Start thinking about these uh, uh, things. Sometimes it also helps to learn from your past mistakes. What I had done earlier in a similar situation, if I had, what was the outcome of uh, that? Based on that, I can go ahead and decide what would be the best for me. Now, I also want to leave you with a very important message that you have to start by sharpening your decision-making skills. There are so many ways of doing it. One of the simplest that people, you know, some of them are used to be doing is things like crossword puzzles, Sudoku, playing some games where instant decisions have to be uh, taken. If you learn that, you will understand how decisions are to be taken. I'll give you one example of uh, that. At the end of it, you will laugh at how ridiculously simple it was. Even some people who are great in mathematics sometimes fail to get this answer. The quiz is very simple. It goes like this. A bat and a ball together cost 110 rupees. The cost of the bat and ball together is 110 rupees. The bat costs 100 rupees more than the ball. Got it? Bat and ball together, 110. Bat is 100 rupees more than the ball. What is the cost of the ball? And you have to do it quickly. Immediately. 
like the KBC question, you know, tick tock, tick tock in 15 seconds, you have to come out with the answer. What is the cost of the ball? Okay, 15 seconds over. Those who said five rupees, hearty congratulations. Because if the ball costs five rupees, the bat costs 100 rupees more than the ball, the bat costs 105 rupees. Together, they are 105 plus 5, which is 110. Try it out on your friends and see. You will be amazed at the number of people who are otherwise supposed to be very competent, very positive thinking. Very good so-called decision makers. They blunder. They don't come out with the right answer. So start with something as small as that. Like how I told you with a child, you can start with telling him which ice cream flavor to select or which item to uh, buy in uh, from the menu on your own level do that okay now before we come to the halfway point and we take a break i will quickly give you one or two very simple quizzes again which will help you to understand how fast you are in decision uh, making okay. i'm going to show you rather sunita is going to show you she's very good at making these slides and all that she's got it ready for you She's going to show you one word at a uh, time. All you have to do is to tell whether this particular word. Let's see the first word, Sunita. Here is the first word. Has it been written in uppercase or in lowercase? You look at it and say, yes, it is in lowercase even though the word is upper it is written in lowercase right but as we go along how fast can you keep reciting here's the next word is it upper or lower here's the next word is it uppercase or lowercase respond in a second next one is it uppercase or lowercase. Next. Is this one uppercase, capitals or lowercase? Next. Is it uppercase or lowercase? And the next. Uppercase or lowercase? And the last one. Uppercase or lowercase. Now, if you notice, look at the whole screen now. On the left side, I have written three words, one below the other, upper, lower, upper, but they are all in lowercase. Below that is upper, which is in uppercase. On the right side, the first word, the word is lower, but it is in uppercase. Below that is lower, which is in lowercase. Below that is lower, but it is in uppercase. Below that is upper. But it is in lowercase. How fast were you able to do this? Is your self-introspection and your own evaluation how good you are in decision making? I'll give you one more quickly. And you can now start using these exercises. Let's go to the next one. Is this word on the left side of the screen or the right side of the uh, screen? Obviously, it's on the left side, you'll say. Fine, let's move on. Now, what about this one? Which side is it on left or right? Next one. Is it on left or right? Which side is it? Next one. Is it on the left side or on the right side? Next one. Left side or right side? Next one, and the next one, and the last one. Here you are. If you've got all of them correct, you are able to identify that this is on the left side and this is on the right side. Hearty congratulations. So while you congratulate yourself, you can give yourself a treat. And I'm going to give myself a cup of tea. And Seema is here with you.
Hi, so nice to see the comments. Left, right, left, right. <laughs> nice one. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, some fantastic tips by Ali. And uh, see, that's what when we keep on talking about counseling all the time, you know, you can come here, Banjara provides counseling, we give free counseling, competent uh, counselors. What does it mean? It does not actually mean that if you have a very major problem in life that you come and discuss with us. Anything small, any dilemma, anything like you, for example, you know, uh, many a time uh, a homemaker will come and say, you know, I'm so well qualified and uh, I'm just taking a break uh, from work. Will it come in the way of my, you know, many of these things keep coming in, uh, in her mind. I'm looking after children. Will I be losing out? What do I do? Just those kind of things, you know, very, very simple things to anything complicated, anything related to relationships or any sort of decision making. Just come and sit down with us and chat. So when you do that, then, you know, you get a lot of reflections, you get a lot of insights into your own uh, self. So that is what is counseling. It just does not mean that something very major, like leaving a job or a relationship issue, but something as small as, you know, many of the things that we keep, uh, uh, you know, in our headspace, which keeps on uh, going on. Am I doing the right thing? Am I not doing the right thing? So please come anytime. Uh, most welcome. And uh, just call us up, uh, take an appointment and come down. Any of us would be very, very happy to sit down and, uh, you know, help you with that. So that is it. And um, uh, we keep talking about our diploma in counseling skills program. Uh, that is, again, both for yourself as well as, uh, you know, to become a competent uh, counselor. And uh, for people who are outside Bangalore, there is an IPCG program, international program uh, in uh, counseling and guidance. So this will be, uh, you know, we'll give you a mentor and the mentor is also a counselor. So, you know, this is, a, again, a very good program to, uh, you know, uh, self-reflect as well as, you know, if you want to take it up professionally. So please contact us again if you need more details. And uh, another fantastic program which we are coming up with, you know, Ali was talking about uh, decision making, inculcating that in children uh, itself and many such topics, you know, we'll be covering that in our certificate in child and adolescent development four month online program. So we have some nice video lessons and uh, mentoring sessions and you can do it from anywhere, uh, uh, you know, around the world. So these are some of the things that are happening here. Keep a check on our website. We come up with a lot of programs. So call us up if you're interested in any or you just want to come and have a chat with us. Thank you. See you next Saturday again. As usual, I'm looking forward to some very interesting comments, questions, etc. Ah, Lata says she did it all correct and reinforced her belief that she is good at decision making. Congratulations. Vinita says, I feel decision making should be started at a very early age stage because I have come across many adults of different ages who are not able to take simple decisions. Okay, so as I wait for your comments and your questions, I just wanted to add one more uh, point to what I've told you, and that is as important and as significant it is to take the right decisions, equally important is to be able to convey the decisions in the best possible manner. There's a very nice quote in management jargon which says you should not tell your decision you should sell your decision you'll be amazed at how much the motivation of the people improves the same way as a salesman will tell you i can't just tell about my product and expect my customer to buy it i have to sell it i have to convince the buyer why he needs it and how it will be beneficial for him then and then only he'll buy it, right? This applies not just for sales and marketing. It applies anywhere. Even if you are dealing with a family member whom you want to convince that this is the right way or this is a better way of doing things or this is what I would like you to do. You try telling your decision to the person and try selling your decision to the uh, person. If you can learn the art of selling your decisions, you will be amazed how much more effective you will 
uh, be in getting other people to abide by your decisions. It happens very often that somebody takes a decision, but the others are not interested in you know, cooperating with him on uh, that. Lata says that's a great input, very necessary with kids, especially. Yes. And exactly, you know, as uh, uh, Vinita said, while it is important for kids, it's equally important for the adults who are still kids as far as decision making is concerned. They've still not learned. And particularly, I've differentiated and told you about programmed and non programmed decisions. Why is it? People wonder sometimes this man is a CEO of this organization, this man is a whatever director, commissioner, and big shot, he does such great things. Then why does he muddle up small, small things? Why does he have problems with relationships? Why is it that people don't like him? It is because he has not learned, number one, how to take non-programmed decisions. And equally important, he has not learned how to convey the decision that he has taken. He cannot take people along with him. And as long as he can, does not or cannot take people along with him, it does not help how good a decision maker he is, right? Okay, Navina says, is there any book where we could do more exercise as you made us do so that we can sharpen our decision making skills? Yes, there is, Navina. We have this booklet on decision making. I think most of you by now are aware that I keep, uh, I have this bad habit of writing very small booklets because the reading uh, power of people of reading 100, 300 page books is gone. So I have now focused on 16 page or 20 page booklets covering each of these important uh, uh, aspects of uh, uh, life at a practical level. And wherever possible, as you asked, I do you know, keep uh, putting in. But don't restrict yourself to that. I told you, you know, doing a crossword puzzle is a uh, sharpens your decision making uh, ability. Playing a particular game where you have to take instantaneous decision. A simple game you're play, playing table tennis, let's say. When the ball is coming close to you, you have to take a decision. Should I hit it this way or that way? Should I hold the bat this way or should I move to the left or should I move to the right? These are all, you know, uh, abilities which sharpen your decision making uh, skills in so many uh, uh, ways. Simple things when you, you're planning out a vacation. How do you decide where to go, how to go, which would be the best place? How do you do the exploration? Do you get carried away by people saying, no, no, go to that particular place. We had gone last year and we were very happy with it. So you get taken in and you go there and you realize that it's not all that uh, good. And after doing all your uh, research, finally, you find that the other people, your family members or whoever it is, they say no. We don't agree with you what you have decided. We have a different opinion on it. So what happened? All your hard work has gone down the drain because you only told the decision. You did not sell the decision. Taking people along is one of the greatest aspects of decision making. The more you have people who are, you know, give you that little support, give you that little hand holding from time to time, work as a team. There is no doubt about the significance of teamwork. Let me tell you that. Okay. Lata says, sometimes my ability to decide quickly makes me impatient with others who are slow and unable to take decisions. Very true. If you are an intelligent person, if you are a person who has learned life skills and you know how to take it, but everybody has not known. Everybody has not gone through Bunjara's life skills uh, uh, program, so they don't know. Uh, what, and the uh, education system doesn't teach you how to uh, you know, build up life uh, skills. So again, to be able to decide how to take the slower people along, how to build up their ability to move at your pace, even that is an important life uh, skill. Divya says, before I was not able to take decisions, I used to ask my mom or husband. But now I think I'm capable enough to take my own decisions by introspecting pros and cons of my decision. That's a very important area. I'm sure all of you are aware and Divya is actually practicing and she's bearing testimony to the fact that all she does is to you know, introspect the pros and cons. You've all heard about this uh, SWOT analysis. It's a very simple thing. Strengths weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Just look at those four uh, things. Ha, Namina says, 
please help how to sell my decision. First step, ask the other person to talk before you start talking. What do you feel about this, this, this aspect or this work or this decision or this activity? Hear them out. If you find that they are more or less on the same um, uh, wavelength, then you know that it's going to be easy. If you find that they have got very rigid views on something, make them explain and make them justify. If they do that, then you know where you stand. Then when you tell your decision, don't say that it is a decision which I have taken. Put it in question mark form. Do you think we will succeed if we try out something of this order? Sometimes people want to be heard. They want to put in their two bits worth. Yeah, what you're saying is right. But I think if we modify it this way and if you add on that to it, then it will be better. Ah, wonderful. You have come out with such a nice decision. Come on, let's implement it. It was originally yours. There was only a small alteration or suggestion that the other person made. But the very fact that you gave praise to the other person that you have come out with this. Fantastic. The person feels very happy that, uh, you know, uh, my thing is being taken in. So you already sold the uh, decision because the person thinks that I'm the person who owns this uh, idea or this uh, uh, you know, knowledge, that thing. Okay. Susan says... Uh, uh, say something on emotional intelligence while making a uh, decision. You see, I told you the management of your uh, uh, emotions and uh, controlling your stress, uh, uh, for example. Emotional intelligence also, as you know, is a lot to do with your motivation levels. If I am myself not motivated, I cannot sell my decisions. It shows through in my body language, in the way I convey, in the way I time I take to take certain decisions, the depth into which I uh, go. Roshan says a person invites you for lunch to a restaurant, cannot decide what to order. As simple as that. It takes away all the fun when the hostess cannot make up her mind what to order. Why should it take away your fun, Roshan? You know what you like, right? You go ahead and order. And even if the main dish, everybody has to eat together, you try and look for a starter or a soup and say, in the meanwhile, while you take a decision, can I have this soup or this starter, please? That will keep me um, occupied. Look around, chat with people, talk to the uh, you know, people around, find out more about the restaurant, find out more about the company that you have got. And finally, this person will come out with the uh, answer. That is very important, that I should not get affected by others behavior and others attitude that itself is a very very important life skill and definition right let us say selling the decision is a skill which will help the others take their decision without knowing that i'm pushing exactly that's what i said no Lata. that if you can make the person do that i remind you again i told this earlier for those of you who are regular watchers of this uh, saturday fbs there was this very interesting serial called yes minister it's an amazing play of human psychology. There's this minister who's not a very great guy. He doesn't know what he's doing much. But he has a secretary who's a very wise man. And inevitably, he finds that the minister is bungling a lot of decisions. And the minister comes out with very stupid ideas and suggestions and decisions. The secretary never says, no, sir, no, minister. He always says, yes, minister. That's why the title of the serial. I'm sure it's still there on the, uh, the internet or whatever it is. Now, the skill that this person uses is to first say, yes, minister, appease his boss. And the boss feels very happy that, yes, I have taken a decision and my secretary has approved of it. So now we will implement it. Slowly, he takes a complete 360 degrees round and tells, sir, if we do it this way, it will be better. If we do it this way, there is a threat to it, something like that. Here is the slide of the serial called uh, um, Yes Minister. You can uh, uh, probably go about uh, telling. Okay. Ha. Surekha says, what are the traits we need in order to sell ourselves and our decisions to? Firstly, as I to told you, bring down your stress levels. Let us not be carried over emotionally. If I'm in a very emotional state, I may not be able to take the right uh, uh, decisions. Secondly, what I need to do is to get as much inputs and information, see how much time I have got 
the more time that I have and I utilize it properly, the better will be the uh, decision. If possible, ask for a postponement and say that I will come out with this answer by tomorrow or next week or whatever it is. Take inputs primarily from knowledgeable people. Then weigh the pros and cons of every possible. List down. Do a brainstorming or listing down. I have one, two, three, four, five options. What are the pluses and minuses of each option? And then I will take my final uh, decision. Javeria says, how about selling a decision to a person who's dominant and stubborn and you won't accept uh, it? That's exactly how that minister is in the series, Javeria. He's got his own bloated ego and he says, I'm the minister. I know everything and I will take the decisions. And the secretary looks into his traits and goes around it. So that dominance and stubbornism, it's a very entertainment, entertaining and humorous uh, uh, serial. But it also teaches you a lot about these basic uh, you know, life skills. Mita says sometimes we tend to take wrong decisions. It may have a huge impact on others. What's the right way to handle such a situation? Yes, this is very important. The moment I realize that I've taken a wrong decision, I think I owe it to my conscience and to my relationship with others to admit it. The best of leaders, bosses, parents are those who immediately acknowledge that I have made a mistake. Teachers, so many uh, people I know, the first thing that they do is to acknowledge and say, yes, I made a mistake without giving any excuses. See, if you say I made a mistake, but it was because that other person gave me wrong information and because this one did not cooperate, there's no point. All I have to do is to say, I acknowledge that I took a wrong decision. Full stop. I'm sorry for it. If it has caused any bad impact or negative outcome, I feel sorry for it. And I'm willing to work towards rectifying it. So here is my suggestion how we can set it right. Or can I have your you know, inputs on how to set it uh, uh, right? Divya says we should have confidence on our decisions irrespective of other things. Yes, Divya, I think this is very important. I told you, you know, there are people who come and say, I gave that example of that young boy who said, all my friends are saying you're stupid. Even a 12 standard person can do it. You are a postgraduate. Why are you taking up this work? So if this person has that confidence that my decision is right, I've never worked in an office. Yes. I'm a brilliant student. I have done this degree, postgraduate. I have all those string of qualifications, but I really don't know how to work in an office. So even if I'm being asked to do some repetitive or clerical work for the time being, I'm interacting with people. I'm looking around. I'm learning from uh, uh, people. There is so much happening. That same boy told me that his boss, you know, once or twice took him for some uh, negotiation that he was doing with some clients. And there he said, when we sit down there in the boardroom, you must hand out our pamphlet to each person sitting there. And then you must take some photographs. And this man felt humiliated. He said, what am I? You know, you asked me to just uh, display pamphlets. Am I a pun or something? And just take a uh, photograph. I said, this is a wonderful opportunity. You are being given a chance to stand there at a close quarter and observe the behavior of each one of those persons in the boardroom. How many people get such opportunity? When you are taking the photographs, observe the body language of people. Body language speaks much more than words. You can learn from that. If there is a gap in between, if there is a break or something like that, when you're giving that pamphlet, talk to somebody and see how that person responds. Normally, those people wouldn't even be talking to you. They are way up. But since you are part of the team that has come there and you're standing there, you talk to them, you pay them a compliment, sir, that comment that you made earlier was so nice. I was impressed. I thought I'll also follow it. Wow, his ego is pampered. And then he'll give you a good lecture on what all he does and how to do things, etc. Okay. Noor says, can brainstorming about the pros and cons be done before decision making? It should be done before decision making. Noor. Before the decision, please. That's why I also insisted that as far as possible, try to gain time. If you have the time, you can sit and do that SWOT analysis. What are the strengths? What are the weaknesses? What are the opportunities? And what are the uh, threats? 
Surekha says, what traits do we need to cultivate in order to sell ourselves and our destinies? I was telling you that a uh, little earlier. Shubha says, how should one overcome the habit of depending on parents in the process of decision making in spite of being a responsible adult? Now, when you say on the one side that you are a responsible adult and on the other side, you say that there is a habit of depending on uh, parents, there's a dichotomy there. It's an oxymoron. You cannot be a responsible adult if you have the habit of depending on uh, parents, right? So you have to think, you have to acknowledge, you have to accept that, no, I don't think I'm such a responsible adult as I am labeling myself. I think there is something lacking. And the hint is very clear. The very fact that I am dependent on my parents means that when I was a child, my parents, with all good intentions, because they loved me so much, they cared for me so much, instead of empowering me to take decisions, be autonomous, be independent, they kept doing things for me. And when they kept doing things for me, I did not learn that you know, decision-making skills. It's never too late. You may be 20, you may be 60, it doesn't matter. If you have realized and identified that this is a shortcoming in uh, me, that I am depending on my parents, you have to start what we say as cutting the umbilical cord. Next time you get tempted to go and ask your parents about a decision to be taken, resist it. Take the responsibility. As you said, I am a responsible adult. So I will take the responsibility. I will do it. Even if I fail, it doesn't matter. Failures are going to be the stepping stones of my success. On the other hand, if I pass, if I succeed, let me go to my parents and say, I didn't want to bother you, you know, you were tired or you had too much work on hand and I didn't want to take up your time. So you know what I did? I took this decision on my own and this is what I've done. And this is what has been the outcome. By that, you are also teaching them to accept that their child is now grown up. The child is an adult. The child is capable of taking decisions because they also have to let go, right? If with all good intentions, they are still interfering in your life, they're still telling you what to do, then you will never become that responsible and independent adult, which you have to be at some time or the other. I have seen innumerable people grown up as adults, like I said, very good in program decisions, but in the smallest of things beyond, my child is, seems to be having 99 degrees temperature or my child has a cold, so I will call up my mother and ask her what to do about it. No harm in calling up your mother, no harm in taking her advice. Probably she is much more experienced than you are, but if you are dependent on your mother, if you say that I cannot do because it's the first time my child got a cold, I don't know how to uh, do it. That is where your antenna should go up and you need to introspect and ask yourself, right? And this is what Lata also says. Letting go is something that really needs to be learned too. Absolutely right. Elders, parents have to learn to let go. If you really love your child, behave like that eagle whose example I always gave. The eagle literally kicks its eaglet out after a few days from 1,000 feet high nest. Not knowing whether the eaglet will be able to fly or not. He has never flown in his life. He has been sitting happily in the nest. But the eagle mother takes a calculated decision and says, I think he's grown enough. I think his wings are strong enough. And by instinct, when I kick him out of it, when he realizes that he is falling, by instinct, his wings will start spreading out. And as he moves his wings, he will start flying. But if I don't do that, he will forever be stuck in this nest at 1,000 feet height. And if I don't feed him, he will stop. The same thing we need to do. And vice versa. I also mentioned that in case you have very loving, caring parents, but somehow they are so dominating that they want to take all the decisions. Please start weaning yourself off. Don't be disrespectful. Don't uh, 
you know, get into a conflict with them, but slowly start taking your own decisions. Initially, they'll be angry. Why didn't you tell me this? I would have told you this. I would have told No, Ma, that time you were busy. I thought I didn't want to stress you. You were a little tired. So I thought I will do this myself. They'll get used to the uh, thing, right? Someone says, when you cut the umbilical cord and your child is independent now, mother feels very proud of her baby. Exactly. That is what you should be. You'll really be able to look back and say, yes, not only I took the right decision of cutting the umbilical cord, but I made my child competent to take his or her own decisions. Susan says, when you balance both your right brain and left brain together, you get the results of your wise mind like an eagle mom. Exactly. Change is coming in at a very rapid pace. The people who are going to be most adaptable to the changes that will keep coming almost on a regular daily, weekly, monthly and yearly basis are those who have sharpened, developed and practiced using both sides of the brain. Including, it's a very big prevention against dementia and Alzheimer's also when you grow old. Start doing it now. Don't wait till you come to that age where your memory starts failing and you, you know, develop senility or dementia. Right now, practice uh, the uh, thing. Yes. And the important point is what someone says uh, uh, just now. I always tell my son that I am there for him if he needs me. I am there for you. I'm not abandoning uh, uh, you. I will be there. In the worst case that an eaglet, uh, you know, flounders and you know, is not able to fly and slowly he comes down to the ground and he is feeling a little uncomfortable. The eagle mother will come down, will spend time with uh, him, will give him a little push and encouragement. And again, the eaglet will uh, fly. So sometimes you have to learn by making certain mistakes. You have to learn by falling down. The same way as you teach a, a small child how to walk. Never in his life he has walked. He is 6 months, 8 months, 10 months, 12 months, whatever he is. And he is trying to get up and walk. He has to fall. When he falls, then only he learns how to balance himself better. How to ensure that next time he will not fall. And that strengthens him. That helps him to take a lot of decisions which start with some small things like uh, uh, this. Yes, someone says, no, the other day he was a little down. And I was up all night talking to him and he was fine. So he has flown out of the nest. He is independent. He is doing things. But once in a while, what happens? He will be down. He'll talk, call up mommy. And he'll say, Ma, I'm so far away and I'm doing this. And I'm happy with what I'm doing. I'm succeeding in what I'm doing. But A, B, C things happen because of which I'm feeling a little pulled down. There is mama available to you. I'm not abandoning you. But on a day-to-day -day basis, you have to solve your own problems. You have to learn how to take the right decisions. I have empowered you. I have kicked you out of the nest from a thousand feet height. Now you have to spread your rings and you have to fly. Do it with everybody whom you are concerned about. Okay, as we are coming to the end, let me wind up with Navina's question. It's important that we trust our kids and other people and thereby empower people in decision making and give positive. Yes, Navina, I'm glad you raised this point. Giving positive strokes goes a long way in encouraging the person to take decisions. The same way I come back to the same example which I gave you. The child falls down when he's trying to walk. What does the mother do? Hey, bad ground. Ground hurt you? No, I will hit the ground. You get up. You get up and you start uh, uh, walking next time. I know you are capable of it. It is that positive stroke which motivates, encourages, and inspires the child to get up and walk. And now that the child is walking and the child is growing up and the child has become an adult, show him the direction in which to walk. That is the ultimate of decision making. Isn't it? It's very simple if you look at it. But it requires introspection. It requires thinking. It requires you know, practice more than anything else, as I keep reminding. So keep doing that. And we will continue with our little journey of these Saturday meetings where we will all get together and do brainstorming. This one hour, I think, teaches me a lot. I don't know about you people, but I definitely learn a lot. Okay. So see you next Saturday. Bye-bye.
next saturday's topic is build hope so we'll meet you next saturday and the good part is we'll be meeting you from manthan so manthan we are having a very nice uh, three day program from friday to sunday and here are the details for more details you can contact us so our next fb live will be live from manthan and uh, on another interesting topic so and if you are interested in joining us uh, please let us know it's going to be uh, having a lot of sessions by dr ali on relationships and a uh, lot of group discussions brainstorming so manthan is always a lively place so let us know if you're interested all right then see you next week